Imagine a place so deadly, its name literally means go in, never come out. A desert where summer temperatures can hit 152 degrees, and the sand gets even hotter. A place so vast and unforgiving, it's been nicknamed the Sea of Death. Now imagine China, not only building a railroad through this desert, but turning this land of scorching doom into a living, growing, green frontier. Yeah, they didn't just fight the desert, they out-engineered it. Welcome to the Taklamakan Desert, China's largest and one of the most dangerous shifting deserts on Earth. Over 1,000 kilometers long, 400 kilometers wide, and the size of Germany. This monster of sand lives in the Tarim Basin, inside the far west Xinjiang region. The sand dunes here, they don't sit still. Driven by violent desert winds, they move, morph, and tower up to 1,000 feet high, constantly reshaping the landscape like a living, breathing creature. Summer temperatures here soar to 152 derv, hot enough to fry an egg and melt your soul. And in winter, it crashes to a 4 derv. It's so brutally bipolar, even camels think twice before crossing. But that didn't stop China from doing the unthinkable, building an 825-kilometer railway right through it. It's called the Hotan Ruokyang Railway, the final piece of a 2,700-kilometer desert rail loop encircling the Taklamakan. Think about this. They had to build 219 bridges across constantly shifting sands. The lead engineer said his team went through two tons of blueprint paper just trying to design the thing. Why so extreme? Because this wasn't just a railroad. This was a declaration. We will not let a fourth of our land be swallowed by sand. You see, this isn't just a story about a railway. This is a story about a nation that planted forests in the desert, used technology to freeze sand, and transformed the sea of death into oases of life. How did they do it? And is this the blueprint for saving other deserts across the planet? Stick around, because what China did next might just blow your mind more than the desert wind. 65% of this massive 825-kilometer railway cuts through soft, shifting desert sand and relentless wind zones. We're talking about a place where sand dunes move 20 meters a year, literally eating roads and tracks if you're not careful. So how do you lay tracks in what's basically a giant sand blender? First challenge, water. It's crucial to form the compacted base under the tracks, but there was no water anywhere nearby. The nearest supply? 130 kilometers away. And even when they managed to haul it in, the sand soaked it up like a sponge. Pour it down and it disappears instantly. Building here was like trying to paint a wall that keeps swallowing the paint. Still, the engineers pushed forward. They discovered that sand with just the right moisture, between 12% and 16%, could be compacted into a solid base. So they used rollers to flatten it layer by layer. Then came the reinforcement, a mesh grid every 60 centimeters, repeated until the foundation could withstand 150 kilopascals of pressure. Translation, sturdy enough for heavy freight trains to pass at full speed. But what about the shifting dunes? In the most unstable zones, they raised the railway on five elevated bridges totaling nearly 50 kilometers, keeping the tracks above the moving sands. Beneath the tracks, dunes could roam free, without derailing anything. And to protect the railway long term, they went green, really green. They planted 13 million sand-loving trees like sea buckthorn and spread 50 million square meters of grass-binding mesh to anchor the sand. Around the tracks, they created a double-layered green belt. Tall trees on the outer edge to block wind, shrubs closer in to trap sand. Underground drip irrigation keeps it all alive. Why go through all this trouble? Because without this railway, life basically stops. From March to September each year, sandstorms cancel flights and shut down highways. For people living south of the desert, that means total isolation. Trains are the only safe, year-round way to travel, ship goods, or reach emergency services. And this isn't just about local convenience, it's global strategy. The Taklamakan once formed a vital link along the ancient Silk Road, where caravans of camels carried goods between China, Central Asia, and Europe. Today, China's new desert railway is reviving that legacy, only now with steel tracks instead of hoofprints. 
It's become a modern trade artery connecting Western China to Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and all the way to Europe. A dead zone has been reborn into a global lifeline. And China didn't stop at railways. They also pulled off another engineering marvel, the world's longest desert highway, the Tarim Desert Expressway, cutting straight through the heart of the Taklamakan. More than 500 kilometers of high-speed highway now snake across one of the most hostile environments on Earth. Just keeping this road from vanishing under sand is a full-time war. So, how did they do it? Green belts, lots of them. On both sides of the highway, China planted millions of drought-resistant trees backed by a massive drip irrigation system. These trees aren't just for show, they form a living wall that holds back sandstorms and stabilizes the soil. Since 2003, they've planted roughly 2 million trees every single year, dug hundreds of wells, and built a green corridor 70 meters wide and 400 kilometers long across the Taklamakan. Maintaining this green lifeline takes serious manpower. So every four kilometers, there's a tiny blue house, home to two technicians who live on site, sometimes for up to two years at a stretch just to monitor and repair the irrigation systems and ensure the road stays open. It's like being stationed on Mars, except your job is to water trees in a furnace. But the real breakthrough came during construction. To build a stable roadbed in such unstable sands, Chinese scientists developed a unique sand fixing method. They planted native grasses in checkerboard patterns, forming natural barriers, then anchored them with a mix of gravel and soil. These living fences prevent sand from creeping onto the road and help lock the foundation in place. And because desert temperatures swing from scorching hot to freezing cold in a single day, literally over 120 degrees during the day, then near freezing at night, they needed machines that wouldn't break down from heat stroke. Enter the robots. China deployed fleets of unmanned bulldozers and rollers, controlled remotely and guided by a smart monitoring system to build sections of the highway without putting human workers at risk. The Hotan Ruokiang Railway is expected to boost rail connectivity in China's western frontier, linking remote communities, easing transportation for locals, and opening new trade routes. It connects minority regions, strengthens national defense, and turns isolated land into an economic lifeline. And what are they moving across this new web of desert infrastructure? Cotton, walnuts, red dates, minerals, Tons of local specialties from Xinjiang are now traveling eastward to major Chinese markets. Even more importantly, the Taklamakan is sitting on a treasure trove of oil and gas, and it's no coincidence this highway cuts right through it. It passes directly through PetroChina's main oil fields, Lunan, Tahi, and Tajong, forming a vital artery for transporting oil and natural gas out of the desert. These resources aren't just fueling China's industrial east, they're kickstarting growth in the underdeveloped West. The Hotan Ruokiang Railway, completed in 2022, stands as a clear showcase of Chinese engineering prowess. It's more than just a track in the sand. It's uninterrupted access to opportunity for millions, paving the way for regional tourism, trade, and development. China didn't just tame the Taklamakan, they turned a deadly desert into an engine of development. If you found this fascinating, hit that like button to support us. And don't forget to follow, because in our next video, we'll reveal how China is transforming these arid lands into livable communities and building a sustainable future for the people. See you in the next one.